Hey, sorry about that. How's it going? Sorry I made you wait, I was just polishing some gonads. Come on in, let's have a coffee. Want a coffee? Okay, so I want to introduce you to my spiffy coffee machine. This coffee machine takes the bean, grinds the bean, makes coffee. And the cool thing is when it grinds the bean, the entire house smells like ground bean. And I love that smell. And this is decaf. I drink decaf as a cat fucks me up. Bit of a wood. I just wanted to welcome you into my life. Say hello. That's about it. Hang out with me all day. We all have fun. It's a Sunday, so it's, it's a bit of a reflecty day. Kind of chill. He just starts off with a really big breakfast. So we're gonna go have that. Starts off with some, uh, something relaxing like a, like a cup of joe or uh, some guitar playing. Uh, starts out with a little bit of strumming. When there's not a hair dryer blowing in the background. Motherfucker. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Hi. 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 
I was trying to give her a soundtrack to introduce herself. The whole anticipation, uh, like the Wild I West, you know. That sort of thing. <laughs> Sorry, broken mojo there. This place is gorgeous. I've never been back here. I'd only been like in the front part, like the polo. Hi. Yeah, it's really pretty. Street address for two two eight two four Roscoe Boulevard because we're about to go do some yoga. yoga. It was amazing. I feel so centered and namaste. It's in the valley. I've never been here before. They played like cool music and we were like, mm. so it was great. We had an awesome time. You guys should try it. Now, uh, where are we going? Oh, we're going to fly a plane, do some yoga. Let go. It's rare that a teacher can get me to relax like really hard things like my face and my knees. Felt everything relaxing. She was awesome. It's a perfect way to get to um, a flight class because you won't be all high strung. Give you an apple when you're done, give you a bottle of water. They're lovely. After flying, it's always a high. I don't know. Grab a drink, go home. Call it a day. It'll be around 5 p.m. then. Close out the day. Go relax. So, where we're going for flight school, it's called Camarillo. I don't know much about California. I just moved here like three and a half years ago. But out of all the places I've been to in Los Angeles, which are really dirty, Los Angeles is a really, it's a beautiful city. It's a really dirty city to live in. Camarillo is the first place in California or the Los Angeles area that I thought I'd want to live. And that's actually where I'm going to flight school. So I'm excited to take you there. A lot of land, a lot of mountains. It's not that crowded. People are peaceful. It's nice. So I grew up in a really hot climate in Saudi Arabia. And it's been really hard to find a place where I actually want to live. Because from there I moved to Pakistan, which is alright. And then I moved to Canada, which is alright. And then within Canada I was in the city in Toronto or in, on the Green Belt, which is really snowy in London. Uh, but And then I went to San Francisco for a little while, it was alright. And I've seen New York and a lot of these cities, but there's only two places I think I'd narrow down to where I'd want to die. 
and have a good time and live my life and just, you know, go nowhere else. One is this terrain. It's mountains and a lot of heat. California's a little dry, so it's kind of annoying, but still beautiful. And the other places I've seen recently are, are in Colorado, the mountains. Um, what mountains are those? Rockies. The Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains are beautiful. It's just really like healthy, a lot of life. It's good to see a lot of life, things focusing on nurturing themselves and seeing things thrive like that. It's really good to see. So yeah, California or Colorado so far, I got nothing else. I'd like to go to Antarctica. I think that'd be dope just for a trip. You know, take, go somewhere with a backpack and a bunch of stuff to survive and just like take a hiking trip across Antarctica and like figure out how to create an igloo and a place to stay warm and a place to how you fish and how you eat. I'd love to go on like a journey or some sort of a, an adventure vacation to Antarctica. Or the North Pole, North Pole. I don't think there's anything wrong with littering with apples. I think it's compost. I feel, I feel bad throwing it on the pavement because the pavement cannot eat the apple. I think it's better if you throw the apple somewhere where something can eat the apple, like the soil or the worms in the soil. But for now, because it's really uncomfortable, I'm just holding an apple while I drive and we're at least 25 miles away from where we have to go. I just have to throw the apple so it can get eaten by the road. I felt a little bad, but I think I'm okay with it. So one of the things about the West Coast that I don't like, at least Southern California, is the traffic. Los Angeles traffic is really shitty, and the way my life is set up is I live really far away from where my labels office is, and so driving there takes around an hour and a half, uh, and sometimes I have to go to different um, places for business meetings, and I have to, it's around three hours, but really, it's only like, 80 miles or 70 miles. So it takes three hours to drive, or four hours sometimes to drive around 60 miles in this city. Uh, so I lived right next to an airport. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't too frequented. So I decided to take flying lessons there so I could start flying everywhere I needed to go. Why am I fascinated by airplanes? Because no matter how big they get or how small they get, they all just operate on four basic forces and they just manipulate those four different forces to fly you wherever you want to go as long as you control those forces and know how to control them. I love that about flying. I love simplicity. I love when you see in, you know, simple scientific concepts applies to things. Applying to things as incredible as flying. That's brilliant. I keep talking about Camarillo because I love this place. I lived here for two years and it always smells like celery and turnips. But you can't let the strawberries fool you because strawberries smell like turnips and a little bit like celery. So you'll be you know driving by or biking by and you'll never know what the hell you're smelling. It's another thing I love about Camarillo. disgusting because usually there's a shit ton of bugs on these wings. So if you gotta yeah. see what's happening. So it's basically a, 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 an entire inspection of the entire plane. So it starts with the wings and the back and the, 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 the nose, the propeller, the tires. Just gotta make sure everything's right and I'm gonna check the, the fuel tanks, etc. This, the back side of the plane, is called the empennage. And the empennage contains a baggage door, which is this. 
There's a static source, which is that. It takes in a little bit of air, it's really tiny. There's a rudder lock, which I have to remove. This is the rudder, it's kind of like a boat. There's the tail tied down, which is right down here. I'm gonna keep on so it doesn't fly away. There's the elevator and rudder. So what I have to do is check movement for, for any debris or anything blocking it. If I hear a crunch, that's probably an issue. Same with these guys. The elevator trims. I'm gonna check the screws. Same thing on the other side. So this is pretty, like, if you come come over here, check this out. So you'd think that there's a lot of specific, uh, really, um, like everything's electronic, but it's not over here. Check out the rudder. It's all just tied by cabling. And, and my shirt up. Look like a pilot, shouldn't I? Look like a douchebag right now. <laughs> um, so this is cool. So if if ever the plane goes down, which happens quite often, I should say that. Uh, I don't know how often that happens, but if the plane goes down, then there's a really cool nifty thing that you get with every um, package, which is an emergency transponder. So if this goes down, the school, which is CIA flight school, is going to know exactly where we're located. It's a little comforting to know. As you can see with these little airplanes, they're really cool because everything's all about being aerodynamic. Even this lock, this is the lock for the door. It goes in and it flattens out. It's pretty cool. Not that I'm a pilot. I don't know what I'm, I'm talking out of my ass here because I've only flown a couple of planes in my life. But yeah, it's fun to talk about. It's a little bit of the stuff I know. Some of the pilots here are probably looking at me laughing. What the fuck does this guy think he is? So, let's see if this student remembers what he learned a while ago. <laughs> so this is your airspeed indicator. This tells you everything in knots, which confuses the crap out of me because I don't really know knots, but it's kind of cool. It has all these indicators of where you need to be. So the plane takes off at a certain speed. You can land at a certain speed. So it just kind of gives you a high level. This is your pitch indicator. I think that's what it's called. It just tells you your pitch is, if that's your plane, that's pitch with, the, with the, your nose with respect to the ground. This is your altimeter. This tells you how much um, atmospheric pressure uh, you can adjust for because everything and the air is all based on pressure and atmospheric pressure. This is your compass navigation. This is a really old school plane, which is why I love it. You learn all the basics and all the fundamentals. It's your vertical speed indicator. Turn indicator tells you the angle with which you're turning. You generally don't want to go over 30 degrees in your turns, but you can go and up to like 45 degrees without basically making the plane become unstable and crashing it. Um, fuel indicators, and this is the yoke. This makes the plane go pitch upward. This makes the plane pitch downward. This is my accelerator. I'm sorry, this is my accelerator. This is the amount of gas I'm gonna pump into the engine uh, in terms of the concentration. So that's my accelerator. This is kind of my cruise control. Even the basic planes have cruise control. You can just set your pitch to a certain level and the plane will just fly itself at that specific pitch. Then down here I have a brake and an accelerator type thing. Um, it, the, uh, it, it turns the rudder at the back. The rudder is the thing that goes sideways like that. And it'll uh, make your plane go left or make your plane go right. That's the overview and I think my teacher's coming. So let's let him teach us how this really works now. So I think what we'll do is let's go out towards the coast for a little bit just to get your hands back on it. Okay. And That's then right. we'll come back and maybe do one or two landings. But That'd be awesome. just kind of go out that way so you get used to the turns and stuff and then come That's back.
fun flight thanks a lot to Danny the instructor and uh, that was fun I, I haven't really done a night landing before so the fact that I did it and he, he let me do it was awesome yeah you did a great job thank very you. good job for being out for a while you did a great job today well, thanks a lot yeah really excited to pick this up again get me that license I can fly exactly we'll get you there <laughs> Independent, stimulating all my senses. Said you're strong and independent. All right, guys, thanks for joining me for my day in the life. It was a lot of fun. It's around seven o'clock now. I'm gonna go have some dinner, have a glass of wine, and go to sleep early. Peaceful Sunday evening. Thanks again. See ya.